Okay, good evening, Mayor and members of Council. The, I'm Debbie Mould, Director of Finance, and I'll give you an update on the Finance Department operations. So let me start out with, uh, we have 71 employees in the finance staff. We have nine divisions. So as you can see on this slide, we have a finance administration, uh, the accounting office, print shop and mail room, um, warehouse operations, budget and financial analysis, our purchasing division, and then our tax office, municipal court and utility billing, those are really our more public facing offices where they have customers coming in on a regular basis. You'll notice in the municipal court operation, I have a 13 and a 14. We have 13 full-time staff. Municipal court is where we house the city marshal operation. So believe it or not, finance has a law enforcement agency within its operations. But um, I think we're into our fourth year of the marshal operation and that 14 is 14 part-time masterpiece officers. So they're the ones that run our marshal office. So in finance, uh, customer service is a priority to you as city council. It's a priority to our city manager and his team, and it's a priority to finance. And we really have both internal and external customers. Our internal customers, I'll start with you, city council. Um, we are here to support your strategic goals and priorities. And if you were to look through the list of council priorities. Many departments are highlighting a few, but if you think about it, finance has to be a part of every one of them because it takes money to run a city. So we are here to uh, support all of your financial goals or all of your st strategic goals. And probably the one that's more closely related to us is the one about high performing transparent government. Uh, talking about transparency of our financial information. Also, in that one, you say maintain adequate financial reserves and long-range financial plans. And as you know, we've been working hard on that over this last fiscal year. So we're here to support you. We're here to support city management. We have to provide Cliff and his team financial information to make strategic uh, plans and decisions for the city currently and going forward. We're here to support all of the city departments with their financial information, make, making sure their transactions are recorded accurately, that they know the numbers that are related to their operations and how to improve on those. And then we're here to support our city employees. We are the part of the payroll side. HR hires them, and then we pay them on a biweekly basis. So we make sure that every employee's, uh, all the hours that they've worked for the city, that they're paid for that accordingly. Our external customers, of course, our property owners, both residential and commercial properties, business owners, our utility customers, which include residential and commercial, our court participants, uh, which would be defendants and attorneys, both. We work with all of them. Of course, the defendants could be citizens of Mesquite, but they may also be people passing through our city and breaking the law. So we work with those people. Of course, we work with vendors and contractors that do business with the city. We work with investors. Uh, we, we make investments of the city money to earn interest income, but also people invest in the city through developers building um, developments throughout the city, but also people that buy our bonds for our capital projects. So um, we work with those type of people. And then other customers would include maybe those like the airport tenants. We help support the airport operation and the golf operation as they meet the needs of their customers. So without, without diving into the numbers of the actual transactions that we process, I won't bore you with all of those details, but I will say we have a, a lean staff, but we have a mean staff. They work really hard in what they do. But without diving into the numbers, let me give you an idea of the magnitude of the finance department's overall responsibilities. Um, if you look at the first bullet point here, we bill, we collect, we monitor, we invest, we spend, and, re and we report on over $250 million of city operations, revenues and expenditures coming in and out of the city, and that's all the funds that operate within the city of Mesquite. Um, we also have to safeguard, track, and report on all city assets. This is where we have to establish strong internal controls and financial policies and procedures to make sure that things are secure and that they're done in a secure way. We also plan, project, and provide for city resources to support the programs, services, and capital projects that are of most importance to you as council, city management, and our citizens. That's through budgeting and long-range plans. And then we also have to provide financial reporting and transparency to all of our customers, both internal and external to make sure that everybody knows that the money that they have invested in the city of Mesquite is handled securely and that we report on that and that everybody knows where that money was spent. So we're, they, look, they learn how their hard-earned hard dollars or investment in the city of Mesquite have been handled. 
some of our accomplishments over the last few years. It's been a couple years since we did a presentation on finance. Um, we've um, achieved, as you know, last fall we achieved the Texas Comptroller's Transparency Stars. We have obtained all five stars. <clears throat> and that was a thing for the city of Mesquite. I think we were the sixth city in the state of Texas to achieve all five categories. Now, since then, I'm sure more cities have come on board, but that was a big achievement for the city of Mesquite and right in line with your transparency goal. Um, for the last 39 years, we've received the Government Finance Officers Association Excellence in Financial Reporting. Uh, we've also, from a national um, purchasing agency, have had 16 consecutive years of excellence in our procurement practices. For the last 30 years with the Government Finance Officers Association, we've had the Distinguished Budget Presentation. Uh, for the last six years, uh, we've uh, had a Distinguished uh, Certificate for our investment policy. That's important. We are following the Public Funds Investment Act, and that's kind of a stamp of approval that our policy follows those procedures. And then the last three years, our court operation has been involved with the Texas Municipal Courts Education Center in traffic safety initiatives, and they've been awarded first place two times, and then um, second place, I think, one of those times. So um, this kind of assures you as council and even our citizens that we're operating within best practice as far as our financial policies and procedures. So it gives you that assurance as we achieve these awards. Some of our accomplishments over the past year. Um, this year, this past year, was the year that we implemented our new payroll system. We started a year ago in February and we had a successful go live in October. I like to say this brought our payroll system, and I think HR would agree, brought us into the 21st century with our payroll system and the processing of payroll. Um, so right now, we were able to offer employee self-service. Um, we provide our employees with ACH deposits or payroll check cards, so we're no longer really handing out live checks. They are paid electronically. Uh, we automated our time and attendance system, which improved efficiencies throughout the organization, and we uh, improved a lot of paper. We went paperless a lot with, with payroll, so that achieved a lot in that area. We consistently have clean audits on our books. We have an external audit every year. They audit the city's books in all areas, and also our grant programs received a clean opinion for the last few years, which is very good for the city of Mesquite. Our bond rating agencies affirmed our AA bond rating for our, our COs and our water sewer revenue bonds. And our DUD bonds were actually upgraded to AAA. So that's a good thing for the city of Mesquite. And as um, Mr. Pascal mentioned, we have conducted two years worth of hotel occupancy tax audits on our local hotels. This is a three-year plan. We have one more year to finish out the last of the hotels that haven't been audited. And this was a big year because we had one large uh, delinquent account that was collected, and that was with the efforts of the legal department. We couldn't have done it without Cody and his efforts. Um, we start the process, but when they, when they don't just pay up based on the evidence we give them, then we get legal involved to bring it in. But it's probably been closer to a half a million dollars over the last two years that we've collected in delinquent taxes. So we've got another round of seven or eight hotels that will be audited this fall. So that will continue. We expanded our marshal service to 1515 North Galloway. You may see them now when you enter the building, and that's just to add some additional security for that facility. We live in a very interesting world these days, so it doesn't hurt to have that extra presence there. Um, I'm always amazed, uh, you might not know this, but we have over 5,200 visitors that come through our court security system every month. And it amazes me, we get a report every month from the, our, our city marshal is Michael Meek, and he's really developed the program and he's done a fabulous job. But I'll just give you an idea of some of the things that they've stopped from coming into the court building. Things like edge weapons, uh, metal batons, brass knuckles, pepper spray, taser and stun guns, and we've actually, they've actually even stopped a couple of loaded handguns from coming into the court building. So I know my court clerks, are very thankful for the marshal's presence in the court building, and I know Judge Crane is as well, so we're very, very thankful for that decision a few years ago to start that program. We also added customer receipt locate, cash receipt locations so that at the point of transaction, the customer is finishing out their business. We used to kind of have a centralized concept. People would have to go one place, do something, go pay, and then come back. We've made it a lot more streamlined to improve our customer service there. 
We also established our first public improvement districts this year, as you're very well aware. We have now three PIDs, we call them PIDs. Uh, that's a lot of work to set those up, um, and Ted Chin really did a lot with the sale of the bonds and that whole process, but uh, the, the, the PIDs were formed, the bonds were sold, and now finance takes over with monitoring and tracking for the next 30 years. We have to stay on top of that and um, track those um, transactions every year. So, and then I wanna say too that I'm very proud of my staff. Many of them work at improving their skills in their areas. We have many employees working on various certifications. Our court clerks have done a phenomenal job. Uh, we have two, of, they, they have different levels, court certification. We have two court clerks that are at, uh, or three that are at a level two already, four of them at a level one, and then we have two more working on obtaining their level one certification. That makes them a stronger employee for us as, as a city of Mesquite. In the accounting area, I have two employees working on their Certified Government Finance Officers Association certification, and one of those is also working to achieve their CPA license, so that's very good. And in our tax office, our supervisor there is working on obtaining her assessor collector certification. Just a good sign that our employees are hard at work for the citizens of Mesquite in doing their jobs. And challenges, we do have challenges in finance as well. Um, changing rules is what I call this. Uh, it creates more reporting requirements, more monitoring requirements, more calculations that have to be done, and more limitations on many uh, financial operations. As you know, the Texas legislation just completed their 86th session. And with that, we have some very large changes that will hit the ground, uh, not so much this budget, coming budget year, but the next year. Of course, the property tax caps, which we'll talk more about this fall, getting you all informed about that. Um, but it will make significant changes in our budget process, in our truth and taxation publications, our tax billing process will have to be adjusted, and notices to public and possible elections. It'll change a lot in that area. They also have added many new requirements of things that have to be reported to the state comptroller's office, and you might not even be aware of that. In the past couple of years, they've increased reporting on debt, outstanding debt for cities, how we spend our hotel occupancy tax money has to be reported, and then uh, tax incentives and abatements have to now be reported more thoroughly. So it's all about transparency and it's good, but it takes more time to process all of those things. The Governmental Accounting Standards Board is the board that kind of drives our financial reporting requirements and the way we handle things. Used to be we would get one major change maybe every three to five years. Now we're getting changes, if not every year, every other year there's a significant change. You might remember the change to put the pension liability on the books and change to put the OPEB liability on the books. We have some big ones coming up regarding leases. And then also they're talking in, about another big huge cha change in how we report local government finances overall. The last big one was like in 2008. So that might be another big change coming. Then the last, the last two sections kind of go together, Security and Exchange Commission and the um, Municipal Securities Rulemaking Board. These are related to our bonds. And they've also added two reporting requirements there uh, that require a lot more tracking and monitoring and reporting than ever before. So again, it's all about being transparent and making sure that investors of the city's bonds um, are well informed. So this all means like our workload has increased due to these changes and I'm anticipating that it'll increase even more going forward and we'll monitor that in the upcoming years. So and last I would like to say, I'm also very thankful for the generous and giving spirit of the finance team. Uh, they work hard at their jobs, but they also give back to the community. So our national night out, the court staff, marshals, and Judge Crane have been involved in national night out for the last several years. Um, we've also, as a finance department, supported other city departments by thanking them. If they did something special for us for a fiscal year, we might reach out to them. We've reached out to police with a Back the Blue event that we did. We reached out to IT and our facility maintenance workers that work in our departments. We kind of did some special things for those internal departments. We've been involved in addressing Mesquite Day, if not since the inception, for sure for the last 10 plus years, I know finance has had a team of people helping at addressing Mesquite Day. We get involved in the Go Red campaign with the American Heart Association. And our big fun thing has been the Spread the Love campaign. And, and Mayor, you've attended our reveals of who won, but we challenge our divisions to, 
donate peanut butter and jelly for the local children of Mesquite through the summer. And we've increased our, our donations. We've done this now for four years, and every year we've increased our donations. So we're here to support the city of Mesquite in many ways, and we're here to support you as council and your strategic goals and priorities. And with that, I would answer any questions. All right, thank you. It's a great presentation. I like the way you ended this. That's, that's excellent. Any questions for Ms. Mall? Great job. That's right. Thank you, David. Okay, thank you.